Hi guys and welcome to another video tutorial and now we're going to start a new series um, on data mining the social media um, scene and we're going to focus on Twitter and mining Twitter for hashtags, topics and time series. So uh, in this uh, part of this these video tutorials is about data mining on Twitter and the topics that we are going to cover are like interacting interacting with the Twitter API using Tweepy and Twitter data the anatomy of a tweet and we are also going to talk about tokenization and frequency analysis and hashtags and user mentions in tweets and also look at time series analysis. So a little bit about Twitter. Twitter is one of the most well-known online social media networks that enjoy extreme popularity in, uh, in the recent years. The service they provide is referred to as microblogging, which is a ver variant of blogging where the piece of content are extre extremely short in the case of Twitter. There is a limitation of 140 characters, like an SMS, for each tweet. And different from other social media platforms such as Facebook, the Twitter network is not bi-directional, meaning that the connections don't have to be mutual. You can follow users who don't follow you back and the other way around. Traditional media is adopting social media as a way to reach a wider audience and most celebrities have a Twitter account to keep in touch with their fans. Users uh, discuss happening events in real time including celebrations, TV shows, sport events, pol political elections and so on. And Twitter is also responsible for popularizing popularizing the use of the term hashtag as a way to group conversations and allow users to follow a particular topic. A hashtag is a single keyword prefi prefixed by a hash symbol, for example, hash Halloween. Uh, the, also, the hash sign is also sometimes called pound sign. Uh, and Whenever somebody tags a tweet conversation with the hashtag ha Halloween, it's used to show pictures of Halloween costumes, for example, or for example, hashtag water on Mars, which was trending after NASA announced that they found evidence of water, water on Mars. So given the variety of uses, Twitter is a potential gold mine for data miners. So let's get a little bit deeper into Twitter and the Twitter API. Uh, Twitter offers a series of APIs to provide programmatic access to Twitter data, including reading tweets, accessing user profiles, and posting content on behalf of a user. In order to set up our projects to access Twitter data, there are two preliminary steps as follows registering your application and choosing a Twitter API client. The registration step will take a few minutes, assuming that we already logged in our Twitter, Twitter account. All we need to do is point our browser to the application management page, which is apps.twitter.com. And you'll get to this page or uh, creating a apps page. So and then then you create the new app. Once the app is registered registered under the keys and tokens tab, which is here. Uh, don't use these consumer keys and consumer secrets because these are my my uh, apps. So um, I highly recommend you create your own. Don't use it because I will be deleting this. And don't abuse any of my settings, please. 
So once the app is registered under the keys and under the keys and access token tabs, we can find the information we need to authenticate our application. The consumer key and consumer secret, also called API key and API secret, respectively, are a setting of uh, your application. The access token and access token secret are instead a setting for your user account. Your application can potentially ask for access to several users through their access token. The access level of these settings defines what the application can do while interacting with Twitter on behalf of a user. Read only is the more conservative option as the application will not be allowed to publish anything or interact with other users via direct messaging. And then we have the rate limits. Uh, the Twitter API limits access to applications. These application, this, uh, these limits are set on a pay uh, per user basis, or to be more precise, on a per <coughs> per access token basis. This means that when an application uses the application only authentication, the rate limits are considered globally for the entire application. While with the pre-user authentication approach, the application can enhance the global number of requests to the API. So it's important to familiarize, this, familiarize yourself with the concept of a rate limit described in the official documentation, which is the first link here, this link here. It's also important to consider the, that different APIs have different rate limits, which is the next. Uh, link here. The first um, page is here. It's uh, very useful to just read through this and get yourself familiarized with this uh, this information and the documentation. So the implication of hitting the API limits is that Twitter will return an error message rather than the data we're asking for. Moreover, if we continue performing, performing more requests to the API, the time required to obtain regular access again will increase as Twitter could flag, flag us as potential abusers. When many API requests are needed by our application, we need a way to avoid this. In Python, the time module part of the standard library allows us to include arbitrary suspensions of the code execution using the time.sleep function. For example, here is a pseudocode. Uh, and in this case, the second request will be executed 10 seconds as specified by the sleep argument after the first one. And then we have the search versus versus stream um, section. Twitter provides more than a single API. In fact, it will be explained a little bit later that there is more than one way to access Twitter data. To keep things simple, we can categorize our options into two classes, the REST APIs and streaming API. So the difference is summarized in the image that you see here and it's very, fairly simple. All the REST APIs only allow you to go back in time. When interacting with Twitter via a REST API, we can search for existing tweets, in fact, that is, tweets that have be already been published and made available for search. Often, these APIs limit the amount of tweets you can retrieve, not just in terms of rate limits, as discussed in the previous uh, section, but also in terms of time span. In fact, it's uh, usually possible to go back in time up to approximately one week, meaning that all the tweets are not retrievable. A second aspect to consider about the REST APIs is that these are usually a best effort, but they are not guaranteed to provide all the tweets published on Twitter. 
as some tweets could be unavailable to search or simply index with a small delay. On the other hand, the streaming API looks into the future. Once we open a connection, we can keep it open and go forward in time. By keeping the HTTP connection open, we can retrieve all the tweets that match our filter criteria as they are published. The streaming API is generally speaking the preferred way of downloading a huge amount of tweets as the interaction with the platform is limited to keeping one of the connections open. On the downside, collecting tweets in this way can be more time consuming as we need to wait for the tweets to be published before we can collect them. So to summarize, the REST APIs are useful, useful when we want to search for tweets authored by a specific user or we want to access our own timeline, while the streaming API is useful when we want to filter a particular keyword and download a massive amount of tweets about, tweets about it, for example, live events. So that's it for this uh, section of uh, the tutorial. And uh, in the next step, we're going to start collecting some data from Twitter and setting up our applications. So remember to like this video and remember to subscribe. Thank you and see you in the next video.